All right, blessings to all. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. And this is my lovely wife, Sister Glorious Liberty. Um, tonight, this is going to be very different. This is like an open discussion. Um, my wife has some things that she has been uh, meditating on from the Word of God and coming from different angles. And this is going to be a powerful discussion, you know. Sister Liberty, you want to introduce or discuss what you want to, what you're trying to do with this at this time? Yes. So um, we're going to do things a little different tonight. So we want to broaden our discussion as we conversated over this the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. We just want to make it an open discussion <laughs> slash Bible study. We don't want to just run through it, but we want to break down everything so that you can get a proper understanding as what God requires from you, from right. us as parents. And you may not have physical children, but you may be like an aunt or an uncle, or you mm -hmm. may be like a spiritual parent or someone in the faith. And so, um, as I said, you may not be a physical parent, but there are still things that God requires mm -hmm. for us to do and that we should be doing. There's a standard, there's a way. And so tonight, um, we're going to talk about a couple things. I have a couple notes. As you see in the title, it has good parenting, bad parenting, godly parenting, parents choice versus kids choice, and then training them up in the Lord yes. or in the world to survive. So I don't know if you wanted me to start, um, well, some of the discussion questions first. You start. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go through a couple questions that the Lord put on my heart and we're going to discuss these things and we're going to line it up with the word of God. We're going to allow the word of God to be the judge. The word of God is quick and sharper than any two edged sword. And so let God be true and every man a lie. And so the first thing that I want to bring to you all's attention and also to my husband is what is good and bad parenting? What is godly parenting? And so you want to touch on that. What are your thoughts when it comes to good and bad parenting? What is godly parenting? Godly parenting, uh, the word of God talks about ministry begins in the home. And so the parent, the parents is responsible for choices that they make. You have to choose to be born again, to be right with God through Christ. And it has to be done in decency and in order. Decency and in order, meaning God is first. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness so that all these things will be added. You must be rooted and grounded in Christ in a healthy ministry. If you're not in a healthy ministry, you seek the Lord. Ask the Lord to guide you in the, in the right church, in a healthy church where you can grow, where you can grow and, and be, uh, what should I say, healthy and, and you know, follow the word of God, meditate on this day and night. And then when God gives you the grace to have children, you train them up. The word of God says, train your child in the way he should go. So when he is getting, so when he is older, he will not depart from it. That goes along with teaching them the testimonies of the Lord, teaching them every, every day. Um, you have to be very careful on what you do as a parent you may let's just say you just got saved 10 years ago and then five years later you have a child you may have some st some things that need to be purged out of you you may be used to watching sports you may be used to watching sitcoms or you know things that the world watches and then you come to the knowledge like man this is not right the spirit of god convicts your heart that this is not right in the eyes of God. And my child should not be watching this. Let me just stop watching this. Die to self. Deny self. Because God is watching. You must. Very, it's very important to teach your children the fear of the Lord. Meaning reverence the Lord in all that you do. Because you will give an account. Good parenting, bad parenting. A good parent raises their child in the Lord. Goes to church, teaches your children how to pray, how to seek the Lord, how to fear God, obey the parents. The word of God talks about obeying, 
you will obey your parents is pleasing to the Lord. So this is um, highly, highly critical in the life of a Christian parent. So bad parenting. Okay, we, us as Christians, you as a Christian, you should know what bad parenting is. Bad, bad parenting loves their child conditionally. And what I mean by that is they um, more, uh, how should I say, more loving towards a child than God. Jesus talks about um, if you do not hate your mother, your father, your child, and he, when he uses that word hate, he's not talking about a demonic hatred. He's talking about your obedience to God must be as hatred towards your children or your siblings or your parents in obedience. And so your child, as he gets, he or she gets older, they're going to be held accountable to, for knowing right and wrong. And so a bad parent may watch <clears throat> stuff that displeases the Lord. Your a bad parent may go to places that displeases the Lord. You, you know, the wrestling matches or, you know, UFC or boxing or something like that. Football, that sports entertainment that teaches or influence aggression in the eyes of God. And then your child grows to be aggressive. You may watch some things that is full of cursing, that's full of perversion and then your child is sitting there watching that indulging it and then your child grows to be defiled and then you wonder why at an age of 12 and 13 and, and so on and so forth why your child or your teenager is disrespectful mm. to authority or disrespectful to the parents or any adult and they be, they grow rebellious that's bad parenting versus good parenting anything you want to touch on <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you said a lot. You said a lot of other things that I was going to touch base on, mm -hmm. but I am going to um, also give my understanding of good parenting, bad parenting, and godly parenting. And the reason why I have three, like some may say, well, you said good parenting and godly parenting. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. There's a yes. difference, and I'm gonna I'm yes, gonna break is. that down. Although I know he talked about the good parenting, what makes a godly good parenting is different than just being a good parent. Yes. So, a good parent is someone you know they do all the good things, they do all the right things. Meaning, you know they 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 provide for their children. You know they're gonna work a job. They may work two or three. You know they're going to put food on the table. Right. They're going to put clothes on their children's back. They're gonna make sure that their children are safe. Mm -hmm. They're gonna make sure that their children have a curfew, you know, come back home when the street lights go on. No, yes. you cannot go to so-and-so's house. No, you can't stay tonight. No, that's dangerous. So they may be a little bit more overprotective versus a bad parent who, mm -hmm. you know, a bad parent is someone, you don't care who your child is around. You don't care what they're exposed to. You don't care that they're up under the group of people that you hang around knowing that they smoke, they drink, right. you know, they're perverted. You, you, you don't you don't really care. You don't care what time of the night or the hour your child comes in. You don't care who they bring in. You don't ask questions. You you just don't care. You don't care where they go after school. You don't care who house they stay over. You don't call to check on them. That's a bad parent. Yes. And then you got the godly parent. The godly good parent is what I should have said. And the godly parent is that parent that you're not just good, meaning you're not just overprotective, but you are training that child up in the way of the Lord. That yes. is a godly good parent. Yes. When you are able to train them and to teach them the fear of the Lord and teach them how to go and conquer the world. And so that's the first, that's the first question or the first discussion that I have down the second, mm -hmm. what you all need to know. This may be a little long or a little lengthy because I want people to be free. I want people to understand what is God's standard for you as parents. What is your job for those of you all who have kids? Right. The Lord opened your womb to have kids. You need to know. Right. And so go get your popcorn, whatever you need to do. But we're going to break this down according to the word of God so that we can set some people free tonight. Jesus and so the next one is. Will God judge us as parents based on what we allow and expose our children to? Now, you touched a little bit on that. 
Some people may not be aware that God is going to judge them according to what they may expose their children to. Right. And so that may look like something as simple as Halloween. Mm. I've gone through this before mm -hmm. with people who have professed to be believers and they still do. Oh, what is it? Halloween night? What they call it at the church? Or... Okay, Harvest Festival or Holy Trunk or Treat. Trunk or Treat. Yeah. I, I heard of a couple different <laughs> ones. And so over the years, I've conversed with people who were supposed to be saved, but they still felt justified and they still felt like, no, it, it's okay to still celebrate Halloween. We're just not going to do it as the world does it. We're going to put a different name, but we're going to allow them to get the, the treats and the candy from the church. But you got to understand how God views it, how God, how God sees it. And so I have a scripture reference in Deuteronomy 30, 19, because what you don't know, or maybe you may not be aware that God is going to hold you accountable to everything that you expose your children to. And so that looks like a lot of different things. That looks like your, your decisions. That looks like what you allow them to watch on TV. That looks like the people that you bring them around. That looks like the, the certain pagan, the pagan holidays, how does God feel about that? Is this right? Okay, like you you just exposed your, your child to perversion. Mm -hmm. You know, you just exposed your child to that level of anger. You just exposed your child to, to that level of emotion. Mm -hmm. Or you just exposed your, your child to, to cigarettes or to weed mm -hmm. or to alcohol. No, they see you doing it. Mm -hmm. And now they, they're exposed. There are things that our children... The, they do, they never have to be exposed to certain things unless we expose them to it. Right. And because we do, we're going to be held accountable. I want to talk about one of the biggest things. And then I'm going to go to the scripture. One of the biggest things that us as parents, we expose our children to is who they are in their identity. Meaning, I've seen children as young as five and four, mm. six, seven, dressing inappropriately, dressing provocatively. I mean, you got four year olds wearing halter tops. You may say, well, let that person just dress their child however they please. Right. You have to understand there are pedophiles out here. There are grown, full grown men that are struggling and battling with perversion, lust. You know, they will, they will get their hands on anyone they can. And so if you're not mindful, if you're careless enough to dress your child like a prostitute or a harlot, then you're exposing them to their environment where there is, you know, um, what, what, what do they call it? When they have the people on the site? Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about, so. Um, sex offenders. Sex okay, offenders. thank you, Holy Ghost. You know, you're going to expose them to the environment of sex offenders and those, you know, who struggle with lust and they don't mind kidnapping your child. And you wonder why... You see on the news that this child went missing, that child went missing. This one ran away and they found her body in a dish. Yes, what happened at, a, at an early age? What happened when her parents should have been protecting her and molding her into her true identity? Instead, they were dressing the child in provocative clothes because children, they don't go out and pick their clothes unless you're just a foolish parent. When your child is one, two, three, you understand that, hey, I have to choose for them. And the decisions, the, the based on the decisions and the choices that you make for that child, that may or will determine how this child is going to grow up and see themselves. No, I'm used to going out in shorts. No, I'm used to going out in halter tops and, you know, shirts that show my three-year-old stomach. You know, my parents think it's cute. I think it's cute. And so... God has something to say about this. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30, 19. And then, Joseph, I'll let you um, share what you got to talk about on that Amen. specific topic. Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy real quick. Because a lot of people don't believe it's in the word of God. They think that hmm. their decisions, their actions are going to go unnoticed before the Lord. Oh, no, no, no. The Lord is not going to hold me accountable based on how I train this child up. You don't even consider that something so small as their attire, their clothing that makes up who they're going to be in the future. That makes up their identity. And so Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Against who? Against you as a parent. 
that mm. I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. So that means good and bad. Yeah. The right thing and the wrong thing, you have to choose. And then it says this here at the end of verse 19. Therefore, choose life. For who? That both you and your seed may live. Excuse me. The scripture is saying choose life for you and your seed because there are options. There are choices. You have to choose between life and death. You have to choose between blessings or curses. You don't realize that that a lot of our decisions as parents come from generational curses that have been passed down. A lot of them are curses that we pass down onto our children and we don't see nothing wrong with them. We don't consider that these are curses, yet we make the same decisions that those who were before us made. And now we're bringing our children into more curses that are on the family line. Instead of choosing blessings, instead of you breaking curses off the family line, you're now exposing and bringing your children into the curses that you too dealt with when you were a child. You know what you went through as a child. Mm -hmm. Now your children are going through the same thing. Do you consider when you put them on coochie cutters and shorts, short shorts and stuff that you think look sexy and really cute nowadays? You know, they post pictures of little kids dressed up as grown people. You know, they have the big gold hoop earrings. They have the lipstick and the makeup on them. You don't consider that there's pedophiles and Sex offenders watching your page and they see your children. You think this is cute. You want views. You want to be famous. You want your, your post to get all these shares and likes. But you don't consider what you're doing to that child. You don't realize that you're not choosing blessings. You're choosing curses. You're making bad decisions. You already are paving the way for bad decisions. And for your children to make bad decisions in their lives as well. You don't consider. And so, Joseph, did you want to... Um, touch on that yes because a lot of people don't think that god will That's judge them based on what they expose their children to right that and that goes to show back to that i'm gonna read that scripture again too with, with the one you highlighted you it says i'm gonna read it too it says i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death now i want to emphasize on life and death it is your choice to choose Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. You don't choose Jesus in his life. You have chosen death because the word of God says you are condemned yeah. already. You are condemned already. And so this is the Old Testament, of course, but the it's Lord is the same mm -hmm. yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. So blessings and cursings, therefore choose life that both you and your seed may live. So it's very highly critically important to raise your children in the Lord God Almighty. It's very important. And yes, yes, you will be held accountable if you do not do so. You will be held accountable because God commands all men to repent of their sins and believe the gospel of Christ Jesus. He also commands to be holy for the Lord your God in heaven is holy. He also commanded to be perfect for the Lord your God in heaven is perfect. That's a commandment. If you do not obey that, Jesus says, you do not love me. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So this is a commandment from the Lord. And so I'm going to read, read that question again. It says, will God judge the parents based on what God we allow and expose them? Yes. Will God judge the parents what we expose them to? My wife already touched on it. I want to, you know, give my perspective as well, coming from the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. Yes. Okay. You have children, uh, well, you have parents that would see nothing wrong with playing video games. Um, and they expose to playing the Fortnite or the mm -hmm. NBA Live or the NFL yeah, Live or Madden. Okay. And so you may see huh. nothing wrong, but what's being played on these video games the world, um, I remember back in 2015, um, you got kids that play the NBA Live and a Jay-Z song is playing on a, on a video game. That is true. A Kanye That's West true. or the worldly ungodly rappers are being played on these video games. The Fortnite and the Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto my goodness. That, oh. that influences and indoctrinate your children mm -hmm. to do evil, mm -hmm. to think evil, your heart is defiled with evil. 
Jesus already described what comes out of man's heart. Murders, blasphemies, adulteries, fornications, cursings, and you are being indoctrinated. But you think your parents, you think your children are okay with God because you just go to church. Mm -hmm. You go to church Sunday and Wednesdays. But Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you do you do all these things that displeases God. God despises it. And you are showing no fear of the Lord. You are showing no fear of the Lord. Not just to your, by yourselves, but for your children also. Your children grows up and don't fear the Lord. And yes, you will be held accountable. That's why it's very, very important. Very, very important. I want to add because like when he talked about the video games, you also have to look at the TV shows. A lot of times the children, they're watching things. A lot of times us as parents, we're not aware. So when we leave them alone, when we, when we buy these devices, when we buy them the video games, because they don't have the money to buy these video games, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have jobs. So the parents are the ones that buy them. So the parents are the ones that are held accountable. Yes. But when you walk away, when the child is in a room on the device or watching a TV show or playing a video game, let me, let me explain something to you. Children do not make video games. Children do not make TV shows or cartoons or anything on these devices. Who do you think make these adults, parents, you know, big people, grown people. And so what does that mean? You have grown people, you have adults that make these things and they're dealing with things. They're making the video games and you know what your child is receiving when they set their eye on that video game or that TV show. What they are receiving is whatever the individual that created that TV show, that sitcom, that mm -hmm. video game. They're receiving whatever it is that the individual on the other side of the camera is battling with, dealing with. And a lot of times that is implemented in that sitcom. Right. Or that video game. So that could be drunkenness. That could be perversion. You know, that can be drug abuse. That can be disobedience. You know, there was a time where my younger nephew, who was from a, a previous relationship, my younger nephew, he was watching a TV show. And I remember I overheard what was happening on the TV show. And the, the child on the TV show told the parent, I hate you. Weeks later, my nephew was saying the same thing to his parents. And I was like, I, I knew exactly where he had gotten that talk from. I knew exactly. And when I heard, I said, wow, that's where the kids get a lot of their behavior from. If you're leaving them alone, if you're leaving them to the devices of the enemy to find out who they are, then when they go being disrespectful, when they get out of place, when they get out of line, when they get out of order, you have no one to be mad about but yourself unless you decide to turn off the video game, mm -hmm. turn off the sitcom, take the devices away, and then you can have a fresh start. I want to bring a scripture um, that I have written down because this scripture talks about pretty much what we're talking about right now. This specific topic that I'm talking about, it talks about that. And so it says, where is it? A child that is left to themselves. Brown's mother's ashamed. Yes. I had it on here. Okay, okay here it is. Proverbs, it's right here. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 15. Listen to this. The rod and reproof gives wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother shame. When your children are in the room and you go about your business, you're cooking, you're not mindful of what's playing many times. You are set it on one thing, but then guess what? An advertisement will come on, mm -hmm. commercial will come on. Now they're exposing your child to perversion. You might have put it on an educational, you know, thing because people do that. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've done that where I've put it on an educational, you know, clip or something. And then the enemy want to play game. You know, he want to bring a demonic, perverted, lustful, exposing of evil advertisement a commercial across your screens thing i've been there i've been there and i've i've seen it i i, I remember i was at a gathering and i was next to a sister and her daughter and now the individual she had to go to use the restroom and so she told me to watch her daughter and guess what she gave she gave the daughter the device and she had it on lock to where the child was unable to log out of that video it could only stay on this video but Guess what happened? As the educational clip was playing, this demonic commercial came across. Mm. And I was like, oh my goodness, 
I couldn't even skip it because the pan had locked it. But when I saw that, I said, see, the devil don't play fair. He don't care how old your child is. He don't care that this child is one. Mm -hmm. He's going to try any and every way to get across to them. So, yeah, something demonic came across the screen. And all I could do was just take the device and put it down like that mm -hmm. until, the, until the commercial went by because I couldn't skip it. Right. But it goes to show that we have to be mindful as to what has our children's attention? What's happening when we give them these devices, when we go and buy them, what is it, NBA? Two, I, don't, I don't even know the name. 2K11, 12, what year is it? 2K22. <laughs> when you go out and you buy these games, you're held accountable because like he said, there are other things happening. Although it's a basketball video game, there are subliminal messages. There are other things happening in the background of these video games. You know, they have other music playing. You know, they have cheerleaders who are half naked other things are happening you know when you play grand theft auto and fork now you know you you know there's witchcraft happening in the background of these video games there are other things happening that you may not be aware of. you may not be able to see them but they are there and it's happening and so if we're not mindful as parents then the enemy is going to creep in mm -hmm. and like the scripture said a child left to himself is going to bring his parents shame. The enemy is going to creep in and you're going to say, Billy, what is going on with your behavior? Billy, why are you acting like this? Billy, why are you talking back? Billy, why are you angry you lost the game and you're throwing that controller? Yeah. Now the TV's broke. Billy, what's the problem? You're going to ask these questions. What has happened with your behavior? And he's not going to be able to tell you why because he's not going to even understand that he just got attacked, that there was an opener through the video game. Or the sitcom or the commercial. Right. He's right. not going to be able to tell you that. You're not even sensitive enough to consider like, man, maybe it has something to do with what you're, what you're watching. Now, there are parents that may be aware and they may withdraw these devices from their children. Like, okay, you have a little too much TV because your right. behavior is right. different. Where, have, where did Billy pick this behavior up? He learned it on Wizards of Waverly Place. He's, he learned it on that so Raven. You know, he's learned it on SpongeBob or whatever they have out there. Yes, Billy learned it from that sitcom right there. That sitcom right there. He learned it from Good Luck Charlie. You know, why are you acting this way? No, he learned it from Fortnite. He learned it from Grand Theft Auto. Why did this child just go up into school and shoot it up? He was playing. What, what's the Soldier Games? Uh, what's, what's the Soldier Games? Uh, Call of Duty. Yes, he learned it from. That's. He learned it from Call of Duty. And if you played that game, if you've seen that game, you know how wicked that game is. There are even zombies in that game, if you don't know. And so, we got to be mindful. Let's friends. Let's go to the next thing. Or you have something to add? I got about. something to add. I do. Uh, um, always, this is why it's very important to be raised in the Lord God. Jesus, he says this very clearly. The light of the body is the eye. Yes. If you're a I be single, and I explained this in one of my videos as well. If your eye be single, you got two eyes. Mm -hmm. You got two eyes, so you focus, you see one. If your eye be single, meaning focus on the word of God, focus on the things of God, your whole body will be full of light. We have the Holy Ghost. We, it's important to teach our children the things of God. So if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. If you, if you are responsible for raising your children and you give them ungodly things to look at, watch, or listen yeah. to, oh my goodness, you're defiled from within. You are defiled from within. Psalms 101, verse 3, it says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A forward or perverse heart will depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. So you have children that go to public schools. That's why... Um, People who have who homeschool is is very is very encouraging, but the public schools are corrupt. You have you may have a you may be a Christian parent and you have children that go to public schools, but guess what? They're around ungodly people. They're around other ungodly friends that play these games, that play um, that curse or, or talk perversely, and then guess what? Evil company corrupts good manners. Yes. Evil yeah, company good corrupts good habits. And then your child comes home from school. He doesn't want to feel like doing homework. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to be responsible for doing his chores. He wants. He has the impression that he wants to be disobedient. It's indoctrinated in him.
But our us as parents, we have to discipline our children and, and, and spend time with them. Spend time with the Word of God. Take them to church. And, you know, this is how we're supposed to do this in the eyes of God. Because God is watching. His eyes is on the evil and the good. There's all things are naked before the Lord God Almighty. So you can't catch God by surprise. You have to know he's watching. You have mm -hmm. to know that he sees everything. Nothing catches him by surprise. Amen. And so he upholds everything by the word of his power. Amen. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. So we're going to go to the next question. We kind of already touched base on it a little bit. But the next one that I have, it says, does our decisions make or break the impact in our children? Yes. Meaning, does Absolutely. my decisions affect our little people, my little people? And like I said, if you don't have physical children... Do you have influence over some little people in your life? Do you have nieces and nephew whose lives you are involved in? Are you a spiritual older brother or spiritual older sister? God still does hold us accountable. And so I want to talk about this for a minute. Because if you don't know, then you don't know that our decisions, meaning whatever you do, whatever you decide to do, whether that's relationships, mm -hmm. whether that's jobs, whether that's finances, mm -hmm. decision that you make, it does impact your child. Yes. Now, it's going to either impact them in a negative way mm -hmm. or a positive way. You need to understand, is my decisions affecting my child? So you may be a person who's going to from relationship to relationship. And you may think that my child's too young to understand or it's not their life. It's my life. It's not their choice. It's my choice. I'm going to find love. Even if that means I have to go through multiple men and multiple women, I'm going to find love. Not realizing that your child, first of all, children are a sponge. And so whatever they become exposed to, whatever they see, whatever they interact with, they're going to pick it up. And they may even start mimicking the behaviors that they see. And so if you're an individual, you're always going from relationship to relationship, then your children are going to be impacted by that decision. Mm -hmm. If you're a person, you've gotten several divorces, your children are going to be impacted by that decision. If you're an individual who it's hard for you to show love, mm -hmm. it's hard for you to forgive, you're bitter, you know, you hate your baby daddy, you can't stand your baby daddy, you can't stand your baby mama, your children, they see how you treat the other individual. They see how you treat people. You can't stand black people. You can't stand white people. You can't stand the police. You can't stand authority. You can't stand the president. Your children, they are watching your behavior. They're right. watching, okay, let me see how mommy handles this decision. They watch how you treat the person that just cuts you off. They watch how you treat the person who owes you money. They watch how you treat the lady at the counter. They're watching, and guess what? They're going to mimic that behavior. Right. If they see you get flipped out the mouth because the, the lady shortchanged you or the lady rung up something twice, they're, they're going to register that in their mind. Oh, okay, this is how life is. If they see you are a person, you're always angry. You don't know. You don't apologize to no one. No, I don't apologize to no one. People apologize to me. Oh, no, I don't say sorry to no one. Oh, no, I don't overcome. You know, I, I, I just let things be as they are. I feel like the world owes me. Then guess what? You're, you're, you're painting a false picture to your children, a false reality. And what that is doing, that's making them think that life works this way. No, baby, the police, they, they're against you. You're black. They're against you. No, you know, the, the, the white people, they're against you. They, you only have to look out for your kind. You only have to watch your own back. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to be this way in life. Nobody's going to give you anything. You have to go out and be a go-getter. You have to go out and get things mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. You're teaching them this. You're painting a false reality for them. And what's going to happen is they're going to model these behaviors. You know, they, they see you not being one to forgive. No, I saw my mom treat my father this way. She was disrespectful. She didn't learn. She didn't know her place. She spoke to my father any kind of way. Or I saw my father beat my mom. He belittled her. He talked down on her. He cursed her out. And so this is how I think life is. Or my dad was always drunk. He always drunk. He told me God, he told me about God, that God is good. Yet he always drunk. He was always drunk. You know, my mom is always bringing different types of men in the house. You know, 
My mom, you know, she, she hates her sister. You know, she doesn't mind burning bridges. She's okay. And guess what? You're teaching your child that this is how life works. Mm -hmm. And so when they leave out of the house, if they don't leave before 18, they're going to go out with their view of the world as like this. No, it's every man for themselves. Like they say, it's a doggy dog world. It's a doggy dog world out here. I got to get it how I live. So, you know, my dad sold drugs. My mom sold drugs. I'm going to sell drugs. My dad carried a, a, a weapon because he was a fearful man. And so I got to get me one of those when I get the chance. As soon as I get old enough to have one, I'm going to get one. Why? Because this is how life is. No, my father drunk. I'm going to drink. I want to try that. I want to try weed. I want to smoke weed. My mom smokes cigarettes. I want to try that too when I get older. And so they grow up and they, they go out and they become little yous that are outside of the will of God. They become you destroying the world. They become a worse of you. You know how a lot of us say, man, I don't want my child to be like how I was. Yes. Are you changing the decisions that you made since having a child? Are you making decisions that are different? Then what you were doing before you had children? Or are you repeating the same cycles? Does your children see the real you? Are you the real person that you're still drinking? You're still clubbing? You're in your 30s and your 40s and your 50s. You're still clubbing. You think this is okay because they say that children change people, but not everybody changes after having kids. Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets it. The light bulb doesn't go off for everyone. And so, what, like I said, what's happening is you're raising up destructive, rebellious young men and women, women of God. You're teaching the, the children, you're teaching the black boys and the black women, whatever color you are, whatever race you are. I'm not trying to make it a racist thing, but I'm saying you do. People do. You have black kids and you feel like, listen, the police don't like you. The authorities don't like you. You you make sure that you know your, your laws. You make sure you know your rights. So when authority does come, your children, they don't know how to respect authority. They don't know the standard. They don't know the order. And that's why so many of them, they get shot because their parents, they failed at teaching them what they should have been doing. You know, they, they've given them a false perspective. No, you got to disrespect authority. You don't let no one talk back to you or talk down on you or belittle you. If anyone talks to you this way, then you set them straight. And when they get shot, then we want to get mad. Mm -hmm. When they're all over the news, they keep, they keep replaying the same footage of your child dying, then we want to get mad. But we don't want to take responsibility and ownership for our job as parents as to what were we doing when they were young? What were we? What were you doing? Were you handing out water guns to your children at an early age? You know what? What were you doing? Because you get you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be real. Let's be real. We want to get mad when they're 16, 13, 12, 17 year old. They're 17 years old and they're going out with guns. You know they're breaking into stores. They're robbing people, carjacking people with guns. We get mad when they're using these things. Yet we give it to them when they're young. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites. We give them water guns. We dress our children provocative, but yet we get mad when they go out and get raped. We get mad when they get snatched up and kidnapped. We get mad when they just shot that individual and now they got to spend the rest of their 80 years in life because they're only 16. We get mad when they got to spend life in prison. We, we, we get mad at, at the system, but you need to get mad at the system, the parenting system. That's who, that's who you need to be pointing the finger at because that's where it starts. Right. This is the foundation. Whether you're a single parent mm -hmm. or whether you're husband and wife, the, the foundation starts with you. It starts with us. I understand what it's like to be a single parent. I just recently got married. Although I was a single parent for like the first six years of my child's life, I could not make excuses as to why I wasn't doing my job as a parent because we can make excuses as to why we're not owning up? Why we're not doing our part? Why we're not doing our job? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, babe. I, I, I know I, I knew I talked. <laughs> I knew I talked but that was I, I had to I had to touch bases on that. I don't know if you want to add as far as our decisions. Do they make or break our? Am I on the right one? Yeah, our decisions right. make or break the impact of our children. Absolutely, because the word of God says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Your you 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 uh, your words constructs um, the mind of your child. You must That's you good. speak when you speak life to your child. Mm. You, really you speak life. You speak in 
goodness, you mm -hmm. speak in the fruit of the spirit, and your child is your child who who is what the world may say innocent, but we're all born in a sin. Um, your child loves the parents at an at at early age, and in the direction that they grow, we we continue to teach them the word of God. We continue to saturate their minds and their hearts in the word of God so they can be pure. Uh, the word of God says the commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. What does that mean? We, when we change, when we uh, teach our children the word of God and uh, letting them know what the word of God says and, and the commandments of God or Jesus Christ, uh, it is pure. It enlightens the eyes. So we take the light in the Lord. I want to read something in um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, um, verse 17. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop in a couple of verses and, and explain what it, what, it, what it means to obey the Lord and how we have the responsibility to train, uh, train our child in the way it should go. So it says this in verse 17. Uh, you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded you. What is a testimony? A testimony is that uh, fallible proofs that God's word is true or the, 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 the truth about God or Jesus Christ is true. Christians, when we're, we're in the world, we was in bondage, but when we came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and we got saved and born again, we have a testimony how God brought us from darkness into light. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, God's me think about that. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have been passed away. Behold, all things become new. So it says, and his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And you shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you. So if you obey, hearken to the voice of the Lord, it's going to be well with you. Their blessings of the Lord will be on your life. Hey, he can bless you. He can increase you, not just in wealth, but everything because he can set you on high. I think about Daniel when he obeyed King Nebuchadnezzar. He worked in Babylon. So the Lord blessed him because he was wise and he, he uh, explained Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Joseph, when he was in uh, Egypt and he was in slavery, the, the, the favor of the Lord was on that man's life. So... Even though Joseph didn't have children, we must resemble obedience in these in these prophets, in these people like Joseph and David and, and uh, Daniel, all these other prophets, and show our children to be light to them so they can learn to be light and be a light to those who are in darkness. Let me see where I'm at. And you shall do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you and you may go in and possess the good land which the Lord swore to your fathers to cast out all your enemies from before you as the Lord has spoken. And check this out. This is verse 20. This is what I want to point out. And when your son asks you in time to come saying, what does it mean? The testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God has commanded you. He's commanded all men. Now, this is the New Testament. This is modern day time. He's, he has come, commanded all men to repent of their sins and believe the gospel of Christ Jesus and obey him, obey him. And when you are obedient son of, or a woman of God um, and your children see that you are obedient, they're going to they're gonna model after you. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus says in John, I forget what chapter, but he says, um, I do what the father, what I see the father do, I do. And what he says to me, I say. So, same with our sons and daughters. The son and daughters see what we, how we supposed to walk in his life. And we teach him the testimonies of Jesus. We teach him the testimonies of the Lord. In verse 21, you, uh, then you shall say to your son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt. So likewise in the modern day time, I, will, I used to be in the world. I used to drink. I used to. Uh, you know, explain drunkenness to him. Explain this, the dangers of sin. Mm -hmm. I used to curse all the time. I used to look at ungodly things and listen to foul music, which was displeasing in the eyes of the Lord. I was in bondage. That's the same way with the children of Egypt that was in, there were bondmen in Egypt. 
and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. So the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross, he delivered us by repenting and believing and baptized in the Holy Ghost and enduring to the end. We teach our children to endure to the end. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt and upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore to our fathers. So the promises of God, when you believe on Jesus Christ, you will spend forever with God. Heaven, the new Jerusalem, is for the sons of God, is for the overcomer, is for the obedient. And verse 24 and 25, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes. What is a statute? It's the same thing as a commandment. It's the same way, it's the same thing as um, his uh, instructions. The, uh, I'm going read it again. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God and as he has commanded us. So what is God's word saying to you when you obey this and read this and meditate on it day and night? What is the word of God saying to you? Are you hearing God's voice when you read it so you can teach your children to obey? That's the role of the parent, to teach your, the children to obey. And the ministry begins in the home. So if you can't guide your family in the home, how can you guide a church if you want to be a bishop or a pastor or an apostle or, and so on and so forth? <clears throat> how can you be in charge of a church? Isn't that in 1 Timothy chapter 3? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And so that's what I have for that. And if you have any more. You know, you I wanted to add a scripture to okay. um, what we were talking about. Proverbs 20, 11. And the reason why we're going to the word of God is because we're, we're allowing the word of God to be the judge. Because yes. what we're saying is nothing that we came up with or some great, right. you know, writing or anything like that. But this is according to the word of God and what the word of God talks about. And so Proverbs 20, 11, it says, even a child is known by his doings, whether his mm. works be pure and whether it be right. And so you mentioned how we were born and shaped into iniquity. And so right. what that means is if you were to watch a child, you would be able to determine whether that child's behavior was good or whether that child's behavior was bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, Billy, you're, and I'm saying Billy, because I'm just using a name. This is not to pinpoint anyone. You know, Billy, your behavior is inappropriate or unacceptable. How do you know? Because a child is known by his doings. Why? Because it's bound in the heart of, it's, wickedness is bound in the heart of a child. That's another proverb. Proverbs 22, 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Mm -hmm. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It's already in you to do wickedly, to do ungodly things to do evil it's already in you we we've, we've seen some what they would call some bad kids mm -hmm. you know all, all of us can say that we've seen some bad kids and a lot of time they may not fully understand what it is that they're doing that that makes it bad but we've seen some bad kids and so foolishness is bound in the heart of a child what's the way to deal with that let's keep reading many people don't like this next part but it will spare your child from hell Mm. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. That foolishness, mm -hmm. that disobedience, that mm -hmm. disrespect that is bound in the heart of a child. You have to, I'm sorry to Go say ahead. this, but I'm going to set you free. You have to spank the child. And that's a nice term. That's, that's a nice term that I'm using. You have to spank the child. You have to do that. Proverbs 23, 13, and you can look these up for yourself. Withhold not correction from the mm -hmm. child. Don't withhold the spanking from the child. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. For if you, now see the word of God is going to give it to you how it says it. Yes. If you beat him with the rod, he is not mm -hmm. going to die. You're going to spare him from hell. You're going to correct them. You know what correction is? That's a redirection to focus on the right thing to do. Right. You are a bad parent if you say, oh, no, I don't spank my child. I don't, I don't, I don't correct them. You don't love them. Meaning you don't want them to do right. I had to learn that. You know, as mothers, we want to baby them. We want to baby them. We don't want to feel like we're hurting them. 
We want to always feel like we're protecting them, but if we're not correcting them, then that is not love. Right. If I'm not redirecting my son, hey, that is wrong over there. Don't do that. If I'm not addressing that, if I'm not confronting that, then I don't love him. And therefore, that says about me as a parent that I'm not a good one. And that's what that may say about individuals that are doing the same thing. You're not a good one. If you don't address what you see, a lot of times as parents, they may see things in their children. You may see behavior patterns in your children, and you may not address it. A lot of times it's because of fear. Mm -hmm. I understand as parents, certain things are hard to address than other things. I'll give you an example. A lot of times with parents, it's hard for them when they see behaviors of of sexual act, sexual activity. You know your child is being active. You know your child is being hot in the tail, as my grandma would say. You know your child is, is sneaking out of the house. You know that there are things that they're doing. They may even be selling drugs, smoking. You see these things. You Come on now. We were all young. You see certain behavior patterns that may look familiar or that is clearly seen that they are doing. And you may be afraid to address it because maybe... Maybe you don't want to uh, sabotage the relationship. Maybe you don't want the relationship to go left. Maybe you enjoy the relationship that you have with your child, yet you don't love your child because you're not addressing the behavior. Mm -hmm. You see a matter, but you just leave the child to themselves. What did the scripture say that that's going to bring you shame? That's going to fall back on you. That's going to make you look bad. As my brother was saying earlier that, we just as Jesus represented God here on earth, mm -hmm. our children, when we when they go out from among God's presence, even in our presence, they represent us. They represent us. Like I, I think it was my girl and my mom that says, you know, don't go up to that school and show your show your tail because I'm gonna whoop your tail. Meaning, mm -hmm. if you go up to the school and act out, get in trouble with the teachers, then they have to call my phone and I have to go up there. I have to leave my job, my home. And go up there. I'm going to spank you. Why? Because you represent me. Mm -hmm. If you look bad, that makes me look bad. And I don't tolerate that. I don't do that. And so we have to address problems when we see it. And I'm going to I'm gonna read one more as to not make this too long. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is we'll do a part two. So the last one that we're going to touch on tonight is should children be allowed to make their own decisions? Now, a lot of you like, uh, no, of course not. But there are people who feel their child should be able to make their own decisions. I've even heard children voting for that or, you know, trying to protest. No, you know, I'm 14, I'm 13. I think children should have a right to, you know, speak their voice. I feel like children should have a choice. Why is that an issue? Why is that an issue? You want to um, elaborate on that or you want me to touch on that real quick while you like, well, you're looking for a scripture? I was looking for this one scripture. I think I, I know it, um, but it's pertaining to another part of like not despising these little ones when the children came up to Jesus and his disciples um, forbid them to come to Jesus and he said, make sure... This, Hearken that you not despise these little ones, mm -hmm. for they behold the faith, for they their angels behold the face of my father. Forbid them. Forbid them. Forbid the children are not coming. Yes, that scripture. Um, but as far as m children making their own decisions, how can a child make his own decision if he is not wise enough to make the right decisions that the parent should be making? The parent <clears throat> is responsible for to be authority that be the authority over the house uh man is head of woman woman is head of the children uh the head of man is christ the head of christ is god the father it's in that order everything must be done in decency and in order that's what the word of god teaches and that's the structure and so a child that makes his own decisions as they get older well is it <clears throat> They have to acknowledge God's and all, God in all their ways. The word of God says, acknowledge God in all of your ways. He will direct your path. So we, are, we as parents are responsible to teach our children to make the right decisions, to make wise decisions, to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Also, Proverbs 8 and 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, 
pride and arrogancy, the evil way, and the forward mouth I hate. What is the evil way? The way that leads to destruction, the broad way. What is broad? Broad means why? Many are called, but few are chosen. Uh, Jesus says, um, enter through the narrow gate, for broad is the way, and and that leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. Many go in by it, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which means difficult is the way that leads to life, and few that be that find it. We have to be responsible to teach our children be that few that finds it. Mm -hmm. You find it in Christ. Christ is salvation. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. You make decisions by having the Lord to guide you. Seek the Lord first while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. He will direct your path. And that's the right decision for anyone who comes to Christ. That is the right decision for anyone who fears the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so your thoughts will be guided. The word of God says in Proverbs 16 and 3, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Your thoughts will be solidified in the word of God. It's very important that you that, that the words of Christ dwell in you richly. You want that to happen. Jesus says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you'll bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. That is right decisions. That is rightly aligned to God's will for your life. If a child makes his own decision that is not according to the will of God, guess what? It's a wrong decision. Mm -hmm. You make fault, you, you, your decisions become faulty. You're going to stagger. You're going to fall. You're going to be in sin, in bondage, and you will be held accountable. That's it. <laughs> I want to say one of the dangers about allowing children to feel like that they are in control, to feel like they have right to make their own decisions, that makes the world that we live in a bad place, a worse mm -hmm. place. Why? First off, Children, they don't know right from wrong. They don't know good and evil. They know what we teach them and what we've exposed them to. And so we live in a society now where that's more accepted, meaning, hey, if you want chicken nuggets instead of broccoli, then you can have that. What would you like to eat today? When I was growing up, there was no choice. I ate what mm -hmm. was set before the table mm -hmm. and I couldn't leave until my plate was clean. Mm -hmm. That's how it was. But now, you know, it's it's broadened for, for children to have a choice and to have a voice, even up until choosing who they feel like they are, meaning their identity, their identity. Sorry. They even have that choice. No, how do you feel? No, don't you don't tell the child what they are. Let them tell you what they are based on how they feel, based on how they've been shaped and molded from the society around them. Yes, the world around them is telling them that they can be anything that they want. You can be the president. You can be like Neil Armstrong and go to the moon. You can be whatever you want <laughs> until reality hits. Mm -hmm. But we give them these choices to decide who and what they want to be. Right. And what we're doing is we're creating a, a, a world where people, people are, people are going to be broken. We're creating a world where people are going to be empty. People are going to be lost of identity. You, you want this young individual, this young boy who was born a boy to decide to dictate how he feels and what he feels. And that's going to determine his future. And so if he is a boy and he feels like a woman, then Based on what his decision is, that's going to shape the world around him. No, although I was born a man, you know, I feel like a woman. And because I feel like a woman, I'm going to act out on that. I'm going to express myself in that way. And guess what? I expect the people around me to accept that. Why? Because I'm a child and I have a, I have a voice too. Mm -hmm. I have a choice too. Although I'm seven, I'm eight, I'm nine, I'm six. You know, my mom allows back, once again, we're going back to the parents, the allowing of the parents. This is why God is going to hold us accountable because mm -hmm. what we allow. Mm -hmm. And so, no, my parents allow me to play with Barbie dolls. You may say, there's nothing wrong with boys playing with Barbies. There's nothing wrong 
with, with little boys playing with Barbies that has boobs, mm -hmm. that has butts. There's nothing wrong with that. That means you lack discernment and you lack foresight. If you if you don't see anything wrong with that, if you can't see clearly that there's nothing wrong with that, then you lack vision. And so if you don't think that there's anything wrong with him wearing a skirt or makeup, if you feel like, no, he needs to express himself, then you are a bad parent. God is going to judge you for that. If you feel like he should make his own choices, own decisions, then you are a foolish and bad parent. And that's because you might as well give him the keys to your car because you're letting him make bad decisions. Right. Give him the keys to your car. If you feel like he should choose for himself, I dare you to give your keys to your child. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. Why? He don't know how to drive. Okay. And therefore he doesn't know life either. Right. We, it's our job to teach them the way of life. It's our job to teach them what they're going to face when they go out, when they go outside of your house. It's our job to teach them how to overcome, to teach them how to be more than conquerors. So for those yes. that do go to public school, because I get it, everybody may not be fortunate enough to, to have homeschool. Right, so right. there are individuals who have to send their children out to school. Okay, right. are you teaching them how to overcome their atmosphere when they go into the school, mm. the public school, and they're being faced with peer pressure, you know, they're being faced with bullying, they need to know how to overcome. They need to know how to have the right response. They need to know how to take some authority and domain. Like, no, I rebuke the spit of confusion. Yes. I yes. rebuke the spit of anger and bitterness in this 12-year-old child that's in my sixth grade class. Like, no, they need to know who they are when they leave the house. Instead of you telling them who they are, society is doing it. Their friends, the peer pressure, who they are around, the influence that is shaping and molding who you are supposed to be molding them to be. And so when they go out and they come back, they're confused. They're different than how they left out. And you wonder why. You know, why is my child being secretive? You know, they used to tell me everything, but now they don't tell me everything anymore. And I'm noticing some behavioral patterns. What's, what's really going on? And you, you wonder why you're lacking somewhere. Mm -hmm. You're lacking somewhere. You, you're lacking on training them up in the way of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Training them up in God. You're, you, you're lacking in teaching them the commands and teaching them the word of God so that when they go up in that school system, they know how to attack the real enemy. It's not the people that they can physically see, but it's the, 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 the principalities, it's the powers, it's the spiritual wickedness in high places, it's the rulers of darkness in the atmosphere that they can't see. It's a spiritual battle, and so they're going to know how to effectively go to school and get through the day based on what we teach them at home, because they're, they're only going to go out and do what we teach them. And so if you're teaching them nothing, guess what? They're going to go out with nothing. And guess what? They're going to come back with other things that, that, that someone else taught them. Right. You didn't teach them anything, and so they left with nothing. They left empty-handed. But guess what? They're going to come back full. Full of what? Full of the world. Full of evil. Full of perversion. You walk in on your 12-year-old child masturbating. He has a device. He has a phone that you bought him because he needs to contact you. And now he's finding himself on some social media platforms that expose him to some other things and, and you try to wonder why. And so the point that we're trying to make is that it all falls back on us. Mm -hmm. When we stand before God individually, God is going to hold us accountable for what we expose our children to. No, I gave you this precious gift because the word of God says that children are the inheritance of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. And so children are a blessing. There are people, they may not have been fortunate, fortunate enough to have children. But for those of you that have it, those children, our children, our little people, they are precious gifts. And we ought to treat it right. When, we, when we're giving back to God, it needs to be as he's given it to us with increase, mm -hmm. with investment. Not, oh God, God gave me this, but I made, I made a monster with it. I made a monster out of what God gave it to me. And now you're, you're mad. You're regretful. You're mad at yourself. But yet when it was time to confront, you didn't confront. When it was time to ad address some things, you didn't do that. You overlooked it. Or you didn't want to get into that conversation with your child. When you stand before God, he's going to say, what happened? I gave you this baby. I gave you this child. What did you do with it? No, Lord, I wanted him to figure out life for himself. That's what a lot of you all are doing. Even when it comes down to religion. Mm -hmm. 
People, I've heard people tell me, let, let your son decide what he wants to believe. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? I might as well tell him the sky is yellow. Because I'm going to lie to him. I might as well tell him Santa is real. The tooth fairy is real. What you're saying is that you want me to give lies to my children and have him to accept that you don't want me to love my son in truth is what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. You're telling me let him choose. As he stated earlier, and I found the scripture, Matthew 19, verse, we're going to start at verse 13. Then were they brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked the children. What are y'all doing? What, what you doing over here, little boy? Go back to your mama. No, Jesus said in red words, suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. No. So if your child is hungry for the Lord, give them the Lord. Give them the truth. A lot of people think they're too young to know. You already giving them choices. Give them the right ones. Give right. them the right. You already giving them choices. Let's be real. Give them the right one. You're keeping them from God. You're keeping them from getting baptized because you feel they're too young. If they understand the need to get baptized, then I think they should get baptized. If they are willing to commit to the Lord, let them get baptized. If they fully understand good and bad and why Jesus died on the cross, why they want to go to heaven, what they should be doing, then they should get baptized. Mm -hmm. Forbid them not. Why? God is going to hold you accountable if you do. If you forbid them from coming unto Jesus, he's going to hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. If you keep them from God, if you keep them from a, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then he's going to judge you. You rather have them invest in their education and become nobodies in the end, gain the whole world and lose their soul, than for them to invest in a relationship with the Lord. You rather them invest all their time in the schoolwork, homework, studying, you know, researching this, than to have them study the word of God. Have them have a relationship as God commands us to. You rather that. So Jesus is saying, don't keep them from coming to me. Matter of fact, you got to be like them to go to heaven. You have to be as children. If we don't come as children, then we cannot go where he is. And so even us, we have to humble ourselves. We have to be teachable. We have to be moldable. Why are our children so precious? Why is it important that we train up our children at a young age? Because when we do, when they get old, they want to the part because it's going to be grounded and rooted in them. Why must we do it at such an early age? Because they're moldable. They're gullible. Do you know? You can tell a child any and everything and they'll believe it. They will believe it. Tell them whatever. You tell them that Santa is real. They will believe it until they get old enough and they find out it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Tell them that the tooth fairy is real. They will believe it. They will believe whatever you tell them. They will believe it. And so how much more the word of God? How much more if we train them in this? Will they not also to believe? It will be in them. So when they go to the schools... It's not going to be nothing for them to quote the word because they believe it. No, I, I'm convinced this is real. No, no, this is what I learned at home. No, this is who I am. I am a son of God. And so when I leave home, when I, when I am in the public places, I am a son of God. And so I act as such. No, I pray always. Men are always to pray. Oh, you think it's funny, young men. Oh, you think it's strange that others. Oh, no, this is normal to me because this is who I am. This is who I am. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end there. I don't know if... Joseph, if you have anything else to add after that. That is it for right now. That is Guys, be encouraged. Lord willing, we will be doing a part two in Jesus' name. Be blessed. In Jesus' name.